Hello, oh, YouTubers. This is a new series where we start talking about, you know, securing your enterprise level applications. Uh, in this series, I'm going to be discussing a lot of different topics when it comes to your needs as an enterprise level engineer, someone who is developing distributed systems, multi-million dollar platforms that are supposed to be serving millions and millions, hundreds of millions of users around the world. Uh, this topic is very niche and very specific, but you know, there's a lot of things that you can actually use and take it out there and implement it in the real world, even if you're not really you know, building a massive system at scale. Um, today, I'm going to show you something very interesting. You know, this video is is going to require no code whatsoever. You're not going to be writing any code, and yet you're going to be writing a super secure app using Azure Active Directory. So what are we trying to do here? I want to build a simple, let me show you here a little map. I want to build a simple uh, Blazor application. So this is my web UI, right? That's Blazor. I want my Blazor application to be able to go and connect with a, a a an API or a microservice, right? Gatekeeper, you know, direct API, whatever the case may be, right? So this is my API. I want to make sure that only specific set of people that I can control and I can add and remove from, I can apply policies to and do all that kind of stuff that can access my API and actually consume you know, access my my UI and consume my API. Very basic, very specific kind of requirement. This is the kind of requirement that you'll see almost in 90% of the application that you're going to be building ever, right? If you're continuing to be a software engineer, I build that craft. 90% of the work that you're going to be doing is going to mainly be, here's a UI, secure it, and then call an API and make sure things are good, okay? So I'm going to show you that 90% and then we're going to dig a little bit deeper, you know, in that series as time allows into how we do even fun, more fun things and more enterprisey things for this. Okay, what's the requirement here and what is this Azure Active Directory, right? Azure Active Directory basically is a Microsoft product. You know, you can use it if you have any Azure account and it will kind of simplify and help you secure your applications, whether they are mobile desktop, you know, mobile a a APIs, you know, uh, front end, back end, whatever the application is. It's going to help you secure that and give you massive amount of control over what you can do with the users that can enter that system and out of that system and what kind of permissions they have based on scopes and stuff like that. So imagine this. This is John. John is kind of, you know, strolling. He wants to kind of get into your application, but John is not authorized. Something needs to tell John you're not allowed to get in there right but also if john is authorized we want john to be able to go and say well you know the application is redirecting john to log in with his azure active directory account right and then john receives a token back from the cloud so the token comes back to john like this and then john sends that token back to the web web ui right the web ui will validate the token challenge that user token and make sure that it's actually uh, real right and this way there's this that third party that basically makes sure that even if the server is compromised you know there is an authority that is really secure like literally fortified you know you know uh, some of the biggest uh, systems around the world you know corporate systems are relying on the security of azure active directory so you get all of that for free right you get all of that really really easy with azure you know uh, subscriptions so how do we implement that? I also want to make sure that when John actually accesses my, my web UI, that my web UI actually transcends that token down to the security token down to an API, right? A token is basically a simple, think of it as a key that basically proves that the person that they say who they are is who they are. So you don't, ha you don't have to share their passwords and usernames all the time. And these tokens expire too. Like, you know, even if someone steals your token, they really can't do much with it once the time expires. There's so much security concepts, you know, baked into this. High level, John goes into a web UI, they ask them to log in. If they don't log, if they can't log in, they get rejected. If they log in and they're authorized, they get into the app and be able to consume the API. We're gonna do that stuff together today and we're going to have a little bit of fun. Okay. Let's start from the top. Okay. Now here's Visual Studio. Let's start from the top. I'm going to create a new, a, 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 um, a new Blazor application. And I'm going to call my Blazor application super secure, super secure app.portal.web. So that's my super secure app. And in that super secure app, I'm going to select my authentication type to be Microsoft Identity Platform. 
which is going to leverage Act Azure Active Directory, right? And then I'm going to keep things at top level statements because I really don't care about this crazy idea of removing namespace. And here is my application. Now watch this. This application now, there's this tool that just popped up now. And this tool is telling me, Hassan, you know, you said you're going to secure based on Azure Active Directory, right? We need to find an app that we can attach this Azure Active Directory, this web UI to it, you know, like the way that you can access the cloud. So basically, this application, in order for it to work the way we want it to, it needs to adhere to that kind of rule. So let me go into our uh, UI here. That's not the right one. Let's go to Azure. So it's portal.azure.com. And I'm going to log in with my PureSoft account. OK, so we need an app, right? I'm going to go here and create a new app. Here is new registration. I'm going to say, call it Super Secure App. OK, so that's my Super Secure App. You will notice in here that there are a bunch of options. Do you only want to allow people in your organization, so people who are pure, that have the you know, uh, domain at puresoft.com to be able to access your application? Do you want anyone with Azure Active Directory to have that kind of access? Or do you want you know, accounts in any organization and personal Microsoft accounts? Skype, Xbox, maybe Facebook, Google, whatever accounts they have, as long as it's AD based, you know, it'll be able to kind of reconciliate and work with it. I want to build this for my enterprise. So it's going to be PureSoft only. I'm going to register. This is it. I just created a, you know, a registration for super secure app and I didn't add anything at all. Not just yet. We will add some stuff to it, but not just yet. Let's go back to Visual Studio. Visual Studio is still asking me to do this, you know, app registration stuff. So I'm going to click next. Oh, it's not letting me move the window, which is really annoying, but you still can see it. So here's my super secure app. That's the app that I just created in Azure. And then I don't have any permissions to transcend to an API yet. Right, so I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to click next, and it's going to generate code for me that will secure my application. Not even one line of code written. It's all generated. It's all kind of scaffolded in, just like how you do with the Entity Framework, right? So, so look at this. If you look at your settings, you will notice that it added all the information you need: domain, tenant, client ID, callback. Sure, you know, amazing. You know that you know these things are pretty much the things that you have in here. See, like application client ID F3A ends with F3A. You'll find it F3A right here, and so on and so forth. What else did it add, this magical scaffolding thing? It went in here and said, hey, you know, add Microsoft Identity Web App, add Microsoft Identity UI, and a whole bunch of things, including uh, uh, use authentication, use authorization. What that means is that when I run this app just like this, off the bat, without adding anything to it, it will say, hey, dude, you know, you need to log in because this app is super secure and you can't just walk in like that. Let's find out. Watch this. Here you go. And I'm going to log in with my PureSoft account. It will say, do you want to give us permissions? Yes, yes, yes. And boom, now you're logged in. Zero lines of code. Your Blazor application now is super secure, right? Is it actually super secure? Like if I take this in here and I go up in here and I go and say, here is my incognito. And I'm going to try to log in with a completely different account. Like I'm going to use my live account like this. And here's a password. No. Boom. You're rejected. See how fast this is? Simple, simple and easy and fast. Like w with all the jibber jabber and the talk that I do in my video, it took me exactly nine minutes, nine minutes to be able to implement security like this in a Blazor application. How cool is that? Right. But now there's a little bit more to this, right? Like, let's say, for instance, there's there's some interesting scenarios where you need to go and say, well, you know, I want only a specific group of people within my organization to be the ones who have that kind of access to my application. Ah, this is where things get, get a little bit more interesting. You want to go to enterprise applications in Azure and you want to go and say, and, and I'm going to show you some real, real nice magic that happens in here. So what did I call it? Super secure app? Yeah, there it is. <coughs> Watch this. Just by me logging into that app, I can now see everybody who attempted to log into my application. Let's just give it a second there. It's trying to pick up. I just literally just created the app. Um, 
if you go into okay while it's while it's picking up logs and stuff like that there is also an option in here where you can go and say assignment required assignment required what that basically means is that even people who have access to your application they have to be assigned to be able to access that application so you can go up in here into users and groups and you can select to add certain users right into the system so you can go here and say i want to add a certain individual maybe elbic maybe evangeline maybe whoever is out there i want to be able to add these people into my group i still want to show you the sign in logs though i hope that it's ready uh, no, this is across all. I want sign in logs for just just my app. Uh, all applications, super secure. I'll show you the power that this platform has when it comes to security. Uh, sign in logs. Do you have anything? Well, that's odd. Should come up with a couple of things. We'll wait for it for a little, because I'm pretty sure there's some there's even some provisioning that's still happening while the app is running. There's also the option where you can have self-service, so people have to, to navigate to your application and actually request and tell you their justification and why they want to do that. And that's the proper way you want to operate in an enterprise. There's also conditional access where you can go and literally create a policy. And in that policy, you want to say, I want to include certain sets of people, certain groups of people, and exclude certain groups of people and all that kind of craziness, right? The part that I want to show you here, though, you know, while we're working on that. Okay, so Hassan Habib at live.com is, is a no-no right and i already told you know the application during the registration process i already told that application that we can't allow people from outside of our org does that mean we're screwed and we need to create a new app and a new system and all that no not really all you really gotta do is that we're gonna go back into azure here and we're gonna go into our super secure app we're gonna go into users and groups and i'm gonna add a new user Right, and if this user is outside, watch this. If I go and say Hassan Habib at live.com, it'll say, Oh, this this individual we can't find in this organization active directory, but you could find but, but you could write them a nice marketing enticing message that would have them actually access want to access your application. So we're basically inviting people from outside of my organization to be able to access my Blazor application. So I can go say and say, Hello, please access my super duper awesome app kind regards yourself because i'm sending it to myself and then you click invite right just the amount of you know technology and control that is in place with me just within nine minutes of creating a blazer application that's just mind-blowing right let's go check our emails right let's go back into our emails here let me show you the message that came in let me give it a refresh here here's the popped up message it's a really nice message of course it has the warning be like hey if you don't recognize this do not click that button you know this is not for you but let's let's do it here here's the message right you know nice message you know only act on this email if you trust the individual it's coming from invites at microsoft.com on behalf of puresoft Here's the sender, here's the organization, here's the domain, and here's all the little details you need. So you basically have already in place, without writing one line of code, a system that allows you to send invitation, control who can and cannot access your application, and all that kind of good stuff. Let's accept the invitation. I'm just going to go here and click accept invitation. Here you go. And it's going to say, hey, dude, you need to log in. Yes, sure. Here you go. And it's probably going to tell me, hey, do you want to give us permission? Like, it's kind of a, a user agreement. Yes, there it is. Sign in. Yes, read my name, read my world, and accept. The little nice UI with the mountains behind and all that good stuff. And now it's trying to log us in. Hang tight while we give you access to puresoft.com. Nice. Here you go. So it's giving you, there's something called myapplications.microsoft.com. And that's where it shows all the applications that you have access to. What that basically means that if I go back to this very message where I was rejected originally, and if I kind of roll back a little bit, let's see, what was it? Local local host? Is that the one? Let's go here. See, now I can access the application. Now I have permissions. Why is that? Because, <coughs> excuse me, because I just gave Hassan access, you know, to access my application. Just as simple as that. You can add people. Just by t giving you these two pieces, I've already covered 
you know, a good 70 to 80 percent percentage of any application you're going to be building, right? Now, here's where things get interesting, right? This part here, okay, this part here we figured out. So now we have this guy done and done and done, and John is happy, and they're able to access this this web UI. Now, what if I want to transcend? I want to transcend this access down to an API, right? I want to allow my Blazor application to securely call an API, right? And that API endpoint can only be accessed through that particular UI and nobody else can do that. How do we go about doing that? Let me show you. Let's go back to uh, 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 Azure and let's go back into app registrations. I'm going to create a new app registration. It's going to be called Super Secure App API. So this is the API side of it. And by the way, you can use dashes and dots and whatever you want for naming conventions. Don't, don't, don't follow my c sharp -y, kind of format of doing things. Okay, so here's registration. Now, with the API, we have to do a little bit of work. Not a lot of work, but a little bit of work. First of all, in order for you to expose an API, we're going to go to the API here. We're going to go and say, sit, sit that API. That URL is super important because that's how we're going to access certain things within, within certain scopes in your ASP.NET Core API. So I'm going to sit that application URI. It's super randomized, you know, leave it as is, great. And then I'm going to go create a scope, and I'm going to call my scope all access. See, it's called it's all good and dandy there. I'm going to say admins and users, and then I'm going to add a bunch of, you know, descriptions. It's up to you. You, you basically want to you wanna be as descriptive of, as possible when you're working with a team, right? Let me take away the camera here so you can see the side of the world. Yeah, you want to be as descriptive as possible, you know, when you are working with a team so people know when they go back and do auditing and all that kind of stuff, they know what you're talking about, right? And I don't know, you know, access all APIs or something like that. Okay, so we added a scope. Still no code. So far, no code. So I have an application ID URI and I have a scope. It's called all access. Great. What's the next step? I want to go and tell my uh, other app, the one that's attached to Blazor, to have access to that API. Like, in order for these things, two, two entities, to talk to each other, I want to give them permission to talk to each other. So I'm going back to the super secure app, going to expose, sorry, API permissions, and then, and then I'm going to add a new permission. Watch this. Add permission. My APIs, the ones that I created. And I'm going to go to super secure app UI. And here is my all access, you know, permission. Just like that. And then I'm going to grant access because I'm the admin. I'm the boss. Yes, add other granted access, whatever. Boom. Okay. So now super secure, super secure app has access to super secure app API. But I don't have the API yet. Let's go ahead and create that API. Let's go back here. Let's close this app. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to create a new project the exact same way. So this is ASP.NET Core Web API. I'm going to call it super secure uh, uh, app.core.api. Just my own naming convention. And uh, let's see here. I want to use Microsoft Identity Platform. And I'm going to click create. Watch this. It's going to pop up the same message. And now on the same message, it's going to go and say, which application, which Azure Active Directory application do you want to hook up to that API? Of course, I created a special app for it, as you should. And I'm going to click next. No other permissions needed. And I'm going to click create finish. So now my ASP.NET Core API is going to be born secure. Like from day one, it's born secure by default. Right, let's do that. So what did it do for me? Here's my API. If you look at the app settings, you're gonna find all the good stuff in here. I wanna change that scope to something called all access because that's actually the scope that I want to allow. This scope in here transcends all the way up to the controller. So you see here required scope, Azure AD scopes. And they are space-based, not comma-based. I see a lot of people do commas. That's wrong, it's not gonna work, right? And if you are kind of intertwined with a, a uh, Microsoft graph, 
right, you're going to have to mention the entire URL. And we'll talk about that in a second. So this controller here, if I go and run this controller right now, it's going to tell me no way you're not going to be able to access because you don't have the right token to access this guy. And some people do some really cool things, like they put in a sign-in button into their Swagger document so you can actually access it. That's that's up to you. But watch this. If I go and hit that API, 401, error response status is 401. 401, you're not allowed, you know, when you need to authenticate and you don't have any tokens. So the API as well, <clears throat> excuse me, is born secure by default. Born secure, just like that. Now, how do we make the Blazor application know about that UI? Because you still have to go and add configurations here. Someone might say, oh my God, here you go. He lied to us, right? He said he's, gonna, he's not going to write any code. And now he's telling us that he has to configure this Blazor application to configure the, the, to access the UI. Actually, that's not true. All I have to go here is just click on Connected Services, Microsoft Identity Platform, and just modify it. Right, modify the existing one. So I'm going to go here to super secure app, add permission to another API. Aha, here you go. That's interesting, right? And I want all access. That's my scope. And I also want uh, I want the URL for the app. So watch this. This is this app registrations app UI. Here is my URL right here. I need that URL in here. So I'm going to throw that URL here for the scope. Right, because unless you do that, it's a pain. I'm gonna go slash all access. That's this is how it distinguishes between one side or the other, right? And in the API URL, I'm just gonna leave the the existing URL. Now watch what happens. It's gonna go and generate a secret for you. It's gonna make you tea and coffee and make you dinner and you know just and breakfast. It's just gonna do everything for you, so you don't have to do none of that stuff. Here you go. I'm clicking finish. Deploy secure, completed, yay. Now things have changed. Look, more configurations just showed up. And then in the program CS, more stuff showed up. Of course, because the template is working based on, see, I, I'm not writing code. I'm just moving code around. That's all. That's just because the template that's generating this is a little bit wonky, but everything is fine. And I really want to fix the indentation for this. Sorry, I'm going to fix the indentation. It's okay. You can You can judge me. There you go. And then, yeah, everything else is added. So look at look what it did now. It went and said, hey, this Blazor application now wants to talk to a downstream API. And because it wants to talk to a downstream API, I'm going to add more configurations that enables token acquisition to send that to a downstream API. OK, what else is left? The beautiful thing about this tool that they created is that they will give you even an example. There's something on the side here called Call Web API. Do you see where my cursor is on the right side? That would be up here where I'm pointing. You know, that's Call Web API. It'll even tell you an example. Say, hey, put the relative URL of the application that you want to call. Right? Let's do that. Let's go here in Options. And let's go and add the relative URL because it's not going to kind of, we don't have the, we don't have the technology to kind of support something like that yet, so we need to tell it, right? So what's my what's my API um, what's my API endpoint? You can find your API endpoint from the properties section, or you could just <laughs> run the application if you have enough memory to just pop up an application. So I want to access this, and I want to access weather forecast endpoint. What just happened here? What is this? This is a an injected a type called i downstream web api it's basically doing all the nice refresh token you know access token for you and we're going to have to rip it apart of course if we if we want to write something respectful you know worthy of the enterprise world you know we're going to have to rip this thing apart we might reuse this this guy is super important because of of an issue with refreshing token for Blazor applications. So that's I guess their workaround, you know, uh, on the .NET team. But this here is supposed to go and hit the API and succeed. Let's see. I'm gonna run my API in one instance. Right, right click, debug, run instance like this, just to make sure that this API is running. And then I'm gonna go and run also my Blazor application. There it is. Okay, so watch this. If I go and do slash 
call web API, I think. That's the URL. It's going to go and try to refresh the token in case that token is, is not refreshed. And boom, hits the API and it gets you the data. Just like that. And that little pop-up that you saw happens specifically in scenarios where your there is a saved token right <laughs> in the browser right but it doesn't have access to it so it throws an exception and it tries to kind of refresh that that's literally what this downstream web api does right if you look into this code here it's it's really hacky and disgusting and i'll show you how to make it really really nice but it basically goes and says give me that consent handler and handle exception and what this guy is doing underneath it's actually really doing some crazy stuff to kind of renew that claim and all that. You don't have to worry about none of that. It, it basically re-challenges the user. The one thing that I want you to know about is that if I go into my controller here, and if I go and say, give me the request, watch this, user request. Uh, actually, I could just say user, right? User dot, I don't know, whatever. Let's just put the user. And I'm going to put a breakpoint in here. I need to restart my API, though. So let's go back here and restart the API. Here we go. So the API is running. Uh, I don't know if the UI is retry. Are we dead? Yeah, we need to start our UI as well. OK, that's fine. Let's go start our UI here. So debug, run new instance. And then I'm going to go and say call web api and i want it to hit that breakpoint right watch this watch this it hit the breakpoint on the controller and if we dissect and open up that kind of user object you will see all the details about who's logging in see hassan at puresoft.com just like that right let's run this there's something that Blazor does called uh, double rendering, and I will show you also at some at some point how to fix that. It's a really nice, like Blazor will hit your API twice, right? If you're not configuring things properly, right? There's a way to fix that. Um, but let's just try and log in from another user. I'm gonna go here and say, give me that um, local host, and here is my local host, and let's put that in there. Asking me to log in. I think I'm authorized still, I think. Hassan Habib. Here's a password. No. Consent accept. And then if I go and say slash call web API. Uh, did I remove the breakpoint? Hang on. Where's my... Oh, I did remove my breakpoint. Let's go back here. I want the one that's coming from Hassan Habib. Not Hassan at PureSoft. There's my breakpoint. User. Quick watch, claims, identity, hassanhabibatlive.com. Right? And you get to see all the claims and all the actors and all the details that you can imagine. Here's their name. You know, what do you want to access in terms of here's the scope? Everything. Everything you can imagine. So that technically covers that part too. See how simple this is? I did write a tiny bit of code just to tell it what base URL it needs to have and, and all that. But that basically what it takes to kind of secure your Blazor application. And you don't have to know about, you know, if you're not super interested in security in general, you don't want to know about, you know, oh, refreshing a token, silent token, what is a tenant, what is an authority, what is a... You know, a lot of this stuff is going to take you a while, especially if you're starting in the tech industry and new engineer, right? It's going to take you a while to kind of wrap your head around all of that. And there's already libraries behind the scene doing that work for you. So why don't you leverage that just to secure your application, jump right back into the things that matter the most. The one important thing I want you to understand is that if you're going to use Azure Active Directory, understand Azure Active Directory, understand the enterprise applications, understand who can and cannot access your application. Otherwise, you would be putting your, uh, um, your company and your system into a very vulnerable, uh, jeopardizable position. Um, I hope you found this a little bit useful. I hope you found this kind of inspiring a little bit. Maybe now you know something new about securing a, a, a UI application with Blazor without writing any code at all in like 10 minutes and then connect that to an API. My um, uh, One of the things I'm going to try to show you next time is how to transcend that. So I want to put another API behind that. 
and I want that token to transcend onwards. You know, a lot of the senior engineers will tell you, oh, that's easy. I could just, you know, kind of, you know, take that token, send it down and, you know, do that. Is there a simpler way to do that? Is there an easier way to do that? You bet your sweet hits it. We do have a, a better way and a simpler way. Um, as usual, you know, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, compliments, <laughs> feel free to drop a comment in the comment section, you know, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video. Take care.